Welcome to the session, greeting of the day. In this class, we will talk about this tungsten inert gas welding process. We have already seen on the arc welding methods. We were on the discussions of this various methods of SMAW and the submerged arc welding and metal inert gas welding process we have seen. In continuous with that, we have to see tungsten inert gas welding process. Here also we are going to use this inert gas and non-consumed electrode of tungsten we are going to use. Therefore, it is named as a TIG welding, tungsten inert gas welding process. The invention of the process in middle of the 20th century gave a big boost for the fabrication of the reactive metals. What is this reactive metals? I have given a few reactive metals like potassium, sodium, aluminium is here. We are going to use this aluminium as a widely. Therefore, this is a reactive metal to the oxygen in the, to the environment that we have to protect. Therefore, this inert gas completely stops the reactions with respect to the environment. So, reactive metals as none of the process like SMIW and gas welding. That is what we have seen previously. SMIW and gas welding process such as CO2 welding and MIG welding also we have seen. Available at that time during those 20th century middle, this SMIW and gas welding cannot able to stop the reaction of aluminium with the environment. Therefore, we are in the position to invent a new method like TIG welding process. We are able to weld them primarily. What is this? Why? Why? Because of atmospheric contaminations of the weld. This is what I told you, the reactions between the environment. Therefore, atmospheric contamination takes place. And poor control over the heat input required for melting. That some disturbances happens. Good for thin sheets. Good for thin sheets. So, we can able to weld large thickness of 20 mm, 25 mm in the SMIW welding process also. But, you see, a thin sheets cannot be welded. When the electrode is kept high current is passed over there and immediate melting otherwise blow holes will form therefore this thick welding process is most suitable for autogenous welding it means without filler material thin sheets can be easily mild heating and it can be joined it means the heat control is there because of direct current electronegative and our gun control Despite of so many developments in the field of welding, a TIG is still invariable recommended for joining of the thin aluminium sheets. Aluminium sheets we are using widely in the aerospaces, shipbuilding industries. Therefore, see aerospaces and the chemical industries, it is applicable there for the, it, it, uh, its property is low weight. The low weight is uh, we are using in the aerospace to lift, but there we need welding in the panels of the aircraft then joining comes here we want to build the thin materials thin thickness then we are moving towards the TIG welding process excellent high strength on the reactive metals so that is interrelated reactive metals contamination should not happen high strength to be there and thin welding to be done so these three combinations makes the invention of TIG processes so heat is generated, now we came inside to the TIG welding, heat is generated by an electric arc as usual like SMIW, as usual like other similar job welding process, electric arc between the base material and a non-consumable tungsten electrode. We are using here 3450 degree centigrade of high melting point. Therefore, it does not mean it will not melt. It should not reach the temperature in such a way we can able to melt the opponent end of the base material. It means electron flow will take place from the negative electrode to the positive. So what happens? Heat generated at the positive end. In this process, electrode movement is manually controlled. Nowadays, automatic also came. Arc and molten weld pool is covered by the inert shielding gas for the protection from the atmospheric contamination. We know this point. Inert gases like argon, helium, neon, krypton, hexagons are used. Hence, it is termed as tungsten, non consumer electrode, and inert gas of helium, gas welding process, that is TIG. 
Thermal efficiency as usual it is a manual, you can thermal efficiency is decreased to 60%. But in the SAW process, summer jack welding, it is a continuous MIG welding process. The roller is continuous. Then we have seen this thermal efficiency as 80 to 90 percent. But here it is 60. The tungsten get tungsten gets readily oxidized if it comes in contact with the oxygen. Therefore, the heating, high melting, that technique we are using for generation of heat and providing melting of the base material. But when this tungsten is intacted with atmospheric air, at high temperature, immediately contaminations also occur in that non consumable electrode. Therefore, this also will react and the base metal like aluminum also will react. Therefore, we are in the position to give strong shielding gas to protect from the atmospheric contaminations of the electrode and the base material. That is how we are giving through the R1 helium as an inert gas. But what is an active gases? Active gases will make reaction. That is why we are not using for the aluminium, for the tungsten. But we are using the MIG welding, active gases. It converted into MAG process that we know. So here see, equipment used in the TIG welding process, as just power sources, welding torches, tungsten electrode. These are the various equipment that we are using. In this picture, you can be able to see a torch and the electrode. Consumed electrode is keeping heat is generated from one hand to another hand. Workpiece is at the bottom, negative, and the electrons are forced there, and the welding has been takes place. See how difficult the welder is doing the job. Two hands simultaneously to operate one non consumed electrode, heat is generated, one is to be melted, and it is deposited. It's a difficult job. See how the groove has been taken. V groove we have, we have studied. The V groove has been taken, and he is going to weld. This position is overhead position. We have seen 4G overhead position welding is doing. So such a way the skill of the welder also very importantly we have to note. We grew both hands overhead position very difficult job he is doing. But inner gas of helium we can use there. So the equipment we have to see one by one. We have seen about uh, these things power sources, voltage, electrode, gas supply. So number one, we are going to see about the power sources. So power source apply apply what are the setup we, we are available for the TIG. Inverter power source, source controllers, and then the power cable houses are needed and the flow meters. You see the flow meters which is available here. And you can see the power control panels to operate this reduction of voltage, DC EM, and the current applications, speed applications, those things. Return leads, torch assembly. We have to see separately this torch assembly. Next slide we have. And the electrode, the consumable, non consumable electrode box, a small, you have to keep inside the gun. You see, so this is a setup of the electrode gun we are using. See, uh, we have a torch body and then a tungsten electrode, small tungsten electrode which is, will be kept inside, which will be kept inside in this. And then we have to connect to the power source of DC electrode negative. Such a way electron will be released at a high temperature on the non consumer electrode. So ceramic shielding cup through which we can able to fix and this will be helps the ceramic shielding cup will helps to the movement of the welder and the gap maintenance can be done by those things. So tungsten housing, so the electrode will be here. The electrode will be kept in this setup inside. The small this electrode length, this electrode length will be kept in between inside. Fitting of this ceramic cup. So you can able to grow if you want to make a grow joining, this size of a groove can be made. In case of a large, here large, the increases of thicknesses, the increase of wider also we need one mm gap, you can use a small ceramic cup, 2 mm gap, you should use a large ceramic cup likewise, on off switches for providing the, for providing the on off and off shielding, tick shielding, inert gas shielding to be on, then shielding comes out, off shielding can be terminated after welding, such work, but the starting method is maybe touch method, maybe field stop method we can do. 
Right. A tick building thorns includes what we have seen in the previous image that we are, I am telling here. The tick building thorns includes three main parts of collets, nozzle, and shielding gas supply. This is what we have seen in the previous. The collet, the nozzle, and the shielding gas supply. What is collet then with the wow? How, how we are calling this? Collet is, a, collet is a primarily used to hold the tungsten electrode. You see, here non consumer electrode is used, and we are going to use the collet to hold the stick, hold the electrode inside it. So, and then varying diameter of position. See, the collet diameter is increased, the electrode diameter is increased, the non consumer electrode diameter is increased, the holding collet also size will increase accordingly. So, collet body. How we can increase strongly, we can able to fix those things and we can able to adjust how far the arc length, how far the stick out of the non consumer should comes out. That can be adjusted as like given there. Then how we can do it, we can able to connect this electrode to the negative and our piece to the positive and we can able to create and flow of electrons will happen and we can able to weld. These things we can able to do. So next one, nozzle from the jet of inert gases of arc, weld pole and tungsten electrode. In the nozzle we are talking, in previous we have talked about collet. Now we are coming to the nozzle. So this is the ceramic nozzle. So the various sizes are available. Small, medium and large sizes. Why it is used when the gap, when the V gap, when the V gap is increasing, here we have to weld. When the V gap increasing, this holder length also, will increase. If it is small, we can use able to small nozzle. It's a guidance, it's like a guiding. The diameter of the gas nozzle, that's the point. The diameter of the gas nozzle must be selected in light of expected size of the weld pool. How much size? A small size? Otherwise the large size. Depending upon the diameter of the nozzle, is selected by the different variables. Inside, see, in this picture, the electrode comes here. And then it is here, but this round depends upon the, the weld pool V group. The gas nozzle needs to replacement owing to their wear and tear. It will be damaged and accordingly we should uh, accordingly we should replace every time. Because of damage the nozzle does not around the weld pools for protection of the atmospheric gases. It is all we have with respect to damage, we should create otherwise it also will not protect the tungsten. If, if it is tungsten is not protected, atmospheric contaminations will take place. So welding tarts. Next we are coming to the shielding gas supply. Typical flow rate of shielding inert gas may vary from 50 to 5 to 50 liters per minute. This argon is supplied, argon is supplied at 50, 5 to 50 liters per minute at a speed. Welding tarts, shielding gas are current rating. TIG welding tarts is generated generally rated on the basic of their current capacity as it is directly links with the welding speed and production rate. Depending upon the current carrying capacity, the welding tarps can either be water cooled or air cooled. If the current capacity is less for the tarps, otherwise the tarps also will damage. If it is highly, if you are working here environment is high, you can give the water cooling. Otherwise for the low current capacity of the tarps, you can give the air cooling processes. So air cooled water cooled torch, lower range welding range of 3 to 150 amps. For the water cool it is highly heating. Torch will also heat it because of heat generation in the middle of the workpiece and the electrode. Therefore what is this torch also to be taken care. Water cooled torch, we are giving the cooling system to the torch. High range of current, maximum of 1000 amps we can go in this septic welding process. So coating improves the electrode. A thermoionic emission capability, we know the electron to be released, therefore the heat generated melting that we know, that point we know. But how this thermoionic happens, we can able to enhance from the tungsten, the thermoionic capability can be increased by coating on the tungsten electrode. That we are doing by a thoriated electrode, thoriated coating we are doing and the zirconated electrode we are doing. This uh, normal tungsten electron coated with the thoriated. Normal electrode is coated with the zirconated. When we are using this thoriated electrode, can be used for direct current 
electrode negative that is nothing but a straight product we call this of a far, mainly used for steel and most of the metals one if if we are adding one percentage thoriated plus tungsten for high current values if you are adding two percentage thoriated plus tungsten for low current values here the difference comes here high, if you are adding one percentage it acts for thousand amps like with high current so two percent is added now for the low current maybe 100 to 130 as we have seen in the previous slide Zirconated, obviously for aluminium welding we are doing alternating current. New types, if these are all somehow defined as a world type category. In the new type, cerium they are using, cerium, cerium they are using for direct current electronegative and lantern we are using for the alternating current of aluminium and steel. So here we are using thoriated for steel. Here we are using cerium, cerium for steel so we can able to tell old or new thoriated and cerium for steels and then zirconated and lanthanum for ac aluminium materials we can able to use so operating variables these are things very very importantly we should note down welding current how much we are supplying as usual like smiw as usual like shielded metal arc welding or summer job welding or big welding process here also current applies from up to, as I told, 100 amps to 300 amps we can give, arc voltage like 24 volt we can give, welding speed, how much, how many mm per second, 30 mm per second or 50 mm per second, okay, likewise we can do, shielding gases, argon we are doing, electrode type is this one, non-consumable, non-consumable, non consumable and coated. These things we can able to check accordingly. So the most important variables. Polarity what we are using here, electrode material could be purely tungsten for direct current electronegative we are using. Widely used in the steel. Approximately when you are using this, 70% of heat is generated at the plate. That's with this we know. Because negative at the Electrode DC electrode negative and remaining 30 percentage of the electrode 70 percent had generated approximately 70 percent of heat is generated at the plate. It is in the downward direction and in the in the downward direction we are adding the filler wall in between this electron consumer and old piece. So it it will 30 percent. So electrode will be saved because 30 percent of heat capacity which, which can withstand which is not reaching the 3450 degree centigrade of tungsten so this we can able to do so 100 percent as it reaches that is melting point we are not reaching the 100 percent 30 percent is rich in the electrodes it keeps the tungsten electrode at the cold end so this this keeps uh, tungsten electrode in the cooling methods so if we are using for this electrode positive limited for sheet metals only and we are using for the alternating current for aluminium that we have already seen because aluminium melting at the quick end therefore we are having the fluctuations like this on and off methods we are using for aluminiums high melting point like steel we are using the direct current electrode negative low melting points we are using the alternating current so what finally we have used here we can see we have used the direct current negative for the electrode and positive for the both piece we have used in such a way what happens from the negative to positive electrons will fall downwards towards the work piece therefore here the ions will be there ions will go upward electrons will come in the downward direction therefore heat is high heat is at the bottom high heat at the work piece so we can able to make the Welding, melting of the workpiece in such a way we can able to add here the electrode also and then the heat generated electrode will melt workpiece will melt all together we can able to do welding in this path so here I want to play one small video what is TIG welding? TIG stands for tungsten inert gas welding the American Welding Society calls this process gas tungsten arc welding or GTAW. You might also hear it called Healy arc welding. 
TIG welding uses a tungsten electrode, and tungsten has an extremely high melting point. When you TIG weld, the electrode gets hot, but it doesn't melt. We say that it's a non-consumable electrode. That doesn't mean it lasts forever. That just means that it doesn't melt and become part of the weld. You see, in a lot of other welding processes, the electrode melts and becomes filler metal. Those are consumable electrode processes. So here's the tungsten electrode being held in a TIG torch. The electrode slips into a collet, and the collet tightens up against the collet body. You can adjust the length that the electrode sticks out of the holder by loosening up the end cap. When you tighten the end cap, the collet clamps down on the electrode. TIG works by melting the base metal, and that is, the metal that makes up the two pieces that are to be joined. The heat is generated by an electric arc that forms between the base metal and the tungsten electrode. You can control the amount of heat with a foot pedal or with a thumb wheel on the torch. For most metals, the current is direct current, or DC. DC is like the current flowing from a car battery. One wire is always the negative and one is always the positive. In DC TIG welding, the electrode is usually negative and the workpiece is positive. The term of DCEN is used for this, indicating that the current is DC and the electrode is negative. This is also called straight polarity, but DCEN is a more descriptive term. DCEN puts most of the heat on the workpiece, and it's the most common setup. When welding aluminum, however, AC is used. In AC, the positive and negative voltages switch back and forth between the electrode and the workpiece. Now, this puts more heat on the electrode, but it has a cleaning effect on the workpiece. You see aluminum forms oxides that float to the top of the weld pool and prevent a good weld. AC current helps control these oxides. In an electric circuit, the current flows in a loop. In TIG welding, the current has to flow in a complete circle from the machine to the torch, into the work, and back to the machine. A work lead is clamped to the work to complete the circuit from the workpiece back to the machine. Now you can TIG weld with or without filler metal, and that's not a choice you have in a lot of other processes. If you want to add filler metal to a TIG weld, use a filler rod, which is just a rod of metal with a specific alloy. You want to make sure that the filler metal you're using is compatible with the base metal and that it has the strength required to do the job. In TIG welding, the molten metal is protected by a shielding gas. This gas, usually argon and sometimes helium or other gases, keeps the molten metal from reacting with oxygen and water vapor in the atmosphere. This shielding gas is stored in high pressure cylinders like these. The pressure is reduced to a usable level by a device called a regulator. The shielding gas flows through a hose and comes out right at the point of the weld. So in summary, TIG welding is an electric arc welding process. It uses a non-consumable tungsten electrode. The filler metal is added separately in the form of filler rod. And the shielding gas comes from a high pressure cylinder. Let's see here. So that we put on the, on the end of the uh, camera so you can actually see while we're welding. This is gonna go dark. Um, just so you know, for a couple seconds before I actually, um, before I actually do any welding. So, I, like I said, I'm going to start an arc here. All right, so I'm going to start the arc here and let you guys see what's happening. So, hopefully, you can see it's starting to get a little like a wet puddle there. Once you see that that puddle, that's when you move. You move. Move. Move, move, move. So each time you move, that's when you want to be uh, adding filler rod. So you just want to practice that as you're, um, you're first learning. Run a couple passes like that without adding filler rod just so you can get yourself comfortable. So now I'm going to just add a little bit into this, um, into this joint here and let you see the process. I'm going to go kind of slow so you guys can really see what's going on here. So you see I'm melting both the metal. Once you see them start to melt, you can add your filler rod. Move, add filler rod. Move. I'm going real slow here. And 
Now, as you can see, I'm adding it right to the front of the puddle. You don't want to add it to the back because that's when you might contaminate it. So you want to just add it right to the front of that puddle. Oop. And you let off the throttle real slow. And then you keep your hand there. So you keep your hand over the weld at the very end like I showed there until your gas stops flowing. So hopefully you could see as I was going real slow there the, the dipping as, um, as we went around. And you want to fill, so this joint here, I beveled the joint since we were doing a thicker piece of steel. I beveled the joint so you could, you could get your weld to fill down in. Now this could be for both visual and for strength. So this is the principle of TIG welding. You see, we have used direct current and electrode negative we have used because electrons are flowing from the top towards the positive ions. So here this is the non-transceivable tungsten electrode and we are supplying the, the blue color we are supplying the gas nozzle of argon we are supplying and then at the, the, as this, is, uh, end, this positive end is receiving heat, eh, we are additionally supplying the consumable filler wire and this is tungsten. See, this is a tungsten non consumer and consumable filler wire is supplied for our understanding. The two plates we have taken and then we are going to deposit a consumable filler wire. Here we are connecting this end to the negative and the workpiece to the positive. So we can able to connect this two. This two we can able to connect likewise. So workpiece you see the cap, switches, handle and switch power cables through with the shielding gas also comes inside. Here we have what we are using here we are using the argon as a shielding. Therefore the shielding protects the environment from the atmospheric contaminations. And then it can able to complete the welding process. So welding current and water and gas supplies are on. Before going for welding, we should be ready with this. An arc is stuck either by two methods. One is a touching method and one is the high frequency field start method. In touching method, we want to touch the electrode. The electrode to be touched in contact with the workpiece. In field start method, we are not going to touch the workpiece, but we are going to apply more than 100 volts in such a way the electrons will be released and it will be absorbed towards the workpiece. This is how the touch method and the field start methods. First method I am talking. Arc is initiated and stuck on the metal piece of the tungsten and this produces the, this procedure repeated twice or thrice to warm up the electrode. In his high temperature only electrons will be released. If temperature is not there, kinetic energy will not be there, electrons will not release. So the arc is then stuck between the pre-cleaned jobs and welded. Now in the second method, high frequency circuit is superimposed on the voltage current. When electrode tip reaches the 3 to 2 mm from the gap, the minimum gap it reaches immediately, electrons are released due to high temperatures. Although when the spark jumps across the air gap, the spark jumps across the air gap between these two, this gap. This gap will be utilized. This gap. Okay, and the, the job, this air path gets ionized and the arc is established. How we are doing, how we are doing the first point, welding puddle is developed and due to arc action of the job. So welding puddle is generated here. So slightly arc is generated now. Now what we have to do, welding Torch is moved backward. When the consider I am going this way direction, the electrode to be moved in the, that, that side direction I am moving. Accordingly, I am adding the filler rod. See, adding the filler rod. This filler rod also due to this heat concerns. Due to this heat concerns. Filler rod is moved ahead. Filler rod is moved ahead. And filler material is added to the weld. The arc is generated. And slightly we are moving the, after heated, we are moving the torch, along with moving of the torch, we are moving the filler wire also. You know what we have seen in the video clip. 
Now only we have seen the video clip that it removed. We are together, both hands are moved. And then after this deposition takes place, after the deposition has been takes place, filler method we can able to take out and we can able to switch off the patches shielding. Filler rod is withdrawn. So within the four steps we can able to complete the welding process. Shielding gas is allowed impinging on the shoulder, solidifying weld pool for a few seconds even after the halfing of the mission because atmospheric contamination will take place at a hot metal. Therefore, for a few seconds until the workpiece temperature is getting down, we we'll keep on keeping the shielding only, even the filler wise removed, even the off of the arc is off. Just the shielding only we are giving. So the applications, advantages, you see, where's most, more metals and all the metals we can able to weld in this concept. Maybe all of steels and aluminiums can be welded. High quality and precision because atmospheric contamination is through organ we are protecting from the contaminations. So pinpoint control, just low level pinpoint control is there. Therefore, therefore lower thermal distortions will take place. If you want to, immediately we can not like electrode or not like submerged or not like a metal inert gas building. The two metals are utilized. No spark is generated. Yes, these are the main points. No fluxes, no slags. Flux we are not using, then obviously no slag will not form. No smoke, as like in the SMAW process, smokes are not generated here. Therefore, we can be able to do the all positions like 1G, 2G positions, 3G positions, 4G and 6G positions also we can be able to do. And low hydrogen electrodes because when we are using the rutile electrodes or basic electrodes the hydrogens will form there. Cell loss and rutile electrodes but we are not using those fluxes itself. Directly the filler material what we are going to melt and post melting process to be done that we are using therefore no hydrogen normal are not there but it having some few limitations also. So low filler material, the position right, it is a slow melting process, it is a manual. So therefore it is a low filler metal depositions. And then good hand, high coordination is required, high skill factors needed because it is a two hand process. In the SMAW from with the one hand electrode and fluxes and melted deposited. Mic welding process automatic, submerged arc welding process also automatic with the fluxes submerged there. But it is not like this. Filler wire is separate separately, gun with the shieldings separate separately and two work together. You can see this image. So welder having two hands unoperated. But skill required. Overhead positions also he did. Bright UV rays than other process. See, a rays are formed. So this is a somehow harmful to the employee alaga. Equipment cost tend to be higher. Yes. Slower travel speed than that of the other process. As this filler wire, filler wire deposition is slower, obviously slower travel speed because we should we should complete this V process. We should complete this V. Slowly he is welding here. And then he moves to the next location. And then he moves to the next location. Filler deposition is slow. And then travel speed also, it is slow. Low productivity. Therefore, these are interrelated. This one. So, productivity also less consumes more time for the welding. High production is needed. Obviously, why the TIG welding? We are using for low melting aluminum we are using. Reactive metals we are using. That is what here. For the reactive metals, importantly, Reactive metals. Yes, utilized here. Applications special, specifically used for welding of reactive and refractive materials. It is highly used in the carbon alloy steels, stainless steels, heat of resistance alloys, aluminium alloys, magnesium alloys, copper alloys, nickel alloys. And welding stainless steel organ is recommended here. See, organ gas is recommended up to 12 mm thickness. Organ helium is utilized greater than this. Greater than for higher higher thickness they are using additional of our double the mixture gas argon and helium pure helium can be used to obtain the increased weld penetrations so weld penetrations can be increased by utilizing 
a helium gas mixture along with the argon shielding. With the alternating current, generally argon shielding gas is used. Where we are using alternating current for aluminium, AC for aluminium, we can able to use this concerns. So operating variables, the welding current, arc voltages, welding speed, shielding gas and electrode type. This we have already seen this cases of variables. So the summary, in welding, in today's class we have seen about the TIG welding process. This is also known as a gas metal arc welding. Whether it is named as a tungsten inert gas welding or it is known as a gas metal arc welding process. Here the working principle of tungsten is used and with respect to direct current electronegative is used and also we have seen about the advantages, applications and important welding parameters. Welding parameters. The remaining part of the subjects we will see you in the next session. Thank you.